Shalom, it's Mariah Lisa with Mariah Shalee Village and today I am shooting this video to share our ELA Selections English Language Arts for Grade 7 for the 2018-2019 school year. So, a few things before we get started. First, this is my comprehensive video with everything that I deem English language arts. So I've done other videos just talking about a piece of the whole and so I won't focus too heavily on um, those curricula in this video because you can go back and watch the other one and see a more in-depth look. But I do want to you know give you a whole video so that you know all of what I consider English language arts. Okay and then um, the second thing is I wanted to tell you what I consider is English language arts. So I am um, a English language arts teacher. That's what I did by trade before I became a homeschool mom. And so this is where I live, right? So you're going to see me do a lot. If you are not language based or you don't care about English language arts the way that I do, feel free to be like, yeah. Elisa's tripping and I'm gonna scroll to the next video but if this is where you live welcome come have a seat at my table so let's get started the first thing I want to talk about is reading comprehension so once a child is reading fluently I like to begin reading comprehension and it's just um, like a thing that they do once a week we read a story and then we do the um, reading activity that goes with it. I'm not looking for a lot, which is rare, but I am looking for a variety of um, the drills and skills, depending on how the book is um, designed. Looking for a variety, and I am looking for them to like increase vocabulary a little bit. I don't need a lot because I do my own vocabulary, and then they get it again when they look at their novel. Um, when they look at when they read their novels but I mean whatever you're reading it should be able to increase your vocabulary to some degree so I do uh, look for that when I first got started I used um, a Becca I believe it's called like read reading skills or skill and drill or something like that I'm not sure I haven't seen it in a while um, I did that for grade three I did that for grade four and then by grade four I was um, ripping too many of the pages out the stories out in order to make it be worth my while so I decided to not use that anymore so what I did to replace it was I used um, flash kids and I chose their reading fundamentals nonfiction which is good for me because I wanted them to have nonfiction um, articles and um, mediums to be reading and I didn't want to necessarily make them read nonfiction like in their literature um, class yet well, a biography would have been fine, but not anything probably outside of that in like third and fourth grade. So I switched to that, and both my boys love reading fundamentals. Both of them are language arts brain. They are um, very advanced in reading and writing and grammar, um, and they love it. So if that's not your kid, uh, then maybe loving that wouldn't be <laughs> um, a way they describe that. But we love those reading fundamentals um, falls off in grade six. And I like to keep some level of reading comprehension going through grade eight. So for this particular child, grade seven, I don't have um, reading fundamentals from Flash Kids. But I do have Reading Revolution, Reconnecting the Roots. We are going, um, this is volume one. I've never seen volume two. But this is what it looks like. And we are going to um, read through this in terms of comprehension for grade seven. Um, I don't have any comprehension issues out of this um, particular child. He reads well. He comprehends well. He can analyze, you know, a story or a text like nobody's business. But I just do like to keep the practice going. And so at least through eighth grade. Um, so I have this. Um, this is full of African-American um leaders men and women so we love that i think the only thing that i really am not a fan of is there's not a lot of variety um in the reading skills and that's what i said i look for right but not so much in grade seven because i'm okay where he's at so this is just practice you know read your story um i do add some annotation here though annotate 
um, well and then answer the questions. It's the same. You know, you have a title, whoever the person's by, this whoever the um, reading comprehension drill is on, excuse me. In this case, it's on Kay Williams. There's a few paragraphs to read, and then there's always 10 questions to answer. There is some variety in questions like this. It looks like it's um, basic questions. We're in the next one. Like There's vocabulary here, you know, fill in the blank, true, false. So there is some variety, but nowhere near um, the variety that I see in like the Flash Kids reading connections. So we'll be using that for reading comprehension. Next, I'm going to um, talk um, about literature. So things that I consider ELA, um, reading comprehension, literature, vocabulary, which replaces spelling for us when we get to grade six. Is that a hard and fast rule? I can replace it in five or seven. It just depends for that particular child. Writing, and handwriting, and grammar. So you'll see all of that come together for what I consider ELA. I believe I told you I was going to tell you that, and then I went right into reading comprehension. So there you go. My apologies if I skipped that. So now let's go into literature. Um, for literature this year, I split short stories and poetry into one journal and then our novels into another, which previously in um, the lower years, I had put everything into one. So all the novels were in the front and then in the back, um, short stories, poetry, figurative language kind of had its own tab. And in this year, it just was too much for grade seven for junior high school, so I needed to split it. I've already done videos on both of these individually, so I won't go into too much detail. I'll just show them. So this is our literature. We have seven novels that we're going to read and study, and then everything in here is everything I could find and grab that I wanted, different literary skills, novel guides, and references, and whatever else um, I found for the seven novels that we're going to read and study for grade seven short stories and poetry. I've selected um, the short stories and poetry that I wanted to study. We'll still read other short stories and, and um, poetry, but these are the ones I wanted to specifically study for grade seven. And we they alternate. So we read these in between novels. In fact, our very first um, short story is going to be at the very beginning of the year and then we'll go into a novel in between novels we'll come and say some short stories and poetry and that's just kind of the way that i weigh it out and so this is what this looks like i've already done a video on this as well so i will leave you to go find that um if you're interested and i'll put the link to the literature and the short stories poetry in the description box below so you have that for vocabulary we study greek and latin roots in junior high and also for grade six, I don't consider grade six junior high. That's another video. Um, but we study Greek and Latin roots, and this is what ours looks like. I've already shot a video about um, what I do here and kind of how I compiled it and what I use. So I'll leave you to find that video. And this is our vocabulary um, journal for the year. And then handwriting. So I continue with handwriting um, through grade eight, nine. I'm not afraid to throw handwriting in there with nine. Typically by ninth grade, though, we're good. Um, I used to teach school. I mentioned that already. I still teach junior high and high schoolers privately as a um, private educator. So I know all too well how much handwriting still needs to take place. Um, 6th, 7th, 8th, and sometimes ninth grade, especially if you are teaching boys. I mean, every once in a while, you get a male student who has nice handwriting off the bat, but for the most part, they need to practice handwriting. Um, all students, but I just know that boys typically um, could benefit from another year. So this is the one that we're using, Zayna Blouser. I love Zayna Blouser. I love that when I taught school, I love that when I taught um, public school, private school, hybrid, I've done it all. And um, also now as a home educator, I love it. The book is getting um, less in terms of pages, though. This is not nearly as, as many pages as it has been, um, like in second and third grade. But they are writing more in a seating, and so that's probably um, the balance. So we'll be doing this for handwriting. And then on to writing. I shared a video um, that went through our writing and rhetoric, which is what we use. So, so far we completed the first four books. So I gave you kind of like our review and the progression that we've taken throughout the program with those first uh, four books. And so now we're going to pick up with book five and book six for grade seven. This is what 
um, book five looks like, where they're going to concentrate on um, refutation and confirmation. In case you're not aware, refutation is writing that um, where you're refuting. So you are um, attacking an issue um, that is presented and so the book is going to present that and then they need to attack it. Typically refutation is when you attack something that's um, like improbable, improper, impossible uh, along that lines. And then confirmation is the exact opposite. The writing is to defend a position or a principle or an issue, right? And so that's what he'll be learning how to do. I like um, teaching book five and grade seven because they're in the logic stage and they're thinking very critically, very analytically, and so it just works out. And boys already have a knack for thinking that way most times and so this is just going to work for us. Um, typically I have been using a logic program or a logic uh, curriculum. I'm not going to this year because this is going to take care of it enough in writing. I did, I'll put it in the um, description box below, but I did use a um, like illogical fallacies um, TPT download. I believe it's just posters. So I'll probably print it, laminate it, shrink it, and hole punch it, put it on an O-ring for him because some of the fallacies show up in the writing. And then book six is commonplace. So in commonplace, they're going to learn how to write um, like six paragraph essay. So both books work on persuasive writing. So the first four books, if you see my other video, um, worked on narr narrative writing. And I was very pleased with his ability to write narratives when we got done. So I believe the this four book, I believe it's four books also that works on, yes, four books that works on persuasive writing too. And so I'll probably shoot another video after four books and share how well he's able to write persuasively after going through these um, four books. So here, let me give you what they will learn. I like how it has a little synopsis from you in the back. So in this one, you will learn how to write four paragraph essays, outline, refute, or confirm parts of stories, understand comparison and contrast, use the narrative to further the purpose of exposition, which I feel so good about because they did a good job teaching him and setting him up with the first four books. Introduce and conclude an essay. Use direct quotes to support an argument. Deliver writing orally and revise um, writing. And then in book six, um, write six paragraph essays. So there's a two paragraph jump. Outline, annotate readings, which I've kind of already taught him. Um, but I like that it shows up here and he'll get it in a more systematic way with this um, program. He'll learn how to pre-write, create a thesis with support that extends throughout the essay. That's important to me. Use comparison to establish an argument. Learn and use various um, rhetorical devices. That's also important to me. Use um, memoria or memorize quotations for topic invention. Transition well. That's important to me. If I teach you writing in junior or high school and you're watching this video, shout out. You know how much Miss Eliza loves for you to transition well. Uh, introduce and conclude an essay. Use direct quotes to support an argument. Deliver writing orally and revise writing. So those last three, he's also doing in book four. So it's just an extension here. And I look forward to those skills showing up in his writing. And then without um, further ado, we are going to conclude with grammar. So we are using um, the Achieve program from Hotter Education. Looks like this. Hotter Education is a, is a Caribbean based curriculum. So you're not going to find this in the States. But I, I really like the um, Caribbean scope and sequence for like their grammar and even their comprehension. Um, you'll see me talk a little bit about that in my grade four video. So we're gonna use this. I, I love the scheme of work here. I just, I love how it's all set up. So I'll walk you through. Um, this is like more of a language arts book, so it does have more than just grammar. There is some writing, some reading, some vocab. We won't need to use 
all of that because I have my own. But there are certain things that I want them to just read, but we probably won't like study, like how it shows up in um, the the workbook here. So that's why I said even with short stories and poetry, we're going to study those. But of course, I'm going to let him read some of the short stories and poetries and myths um, that are in here. We just won't need to like do a concentrated study on it. We can just read it, kind of talk about it, and move on. Um, but let me give you the grammar that I know we are going to hit for grade seven. Um, using the verb be, I love how they teach the verb um, be. It's better than anything I've ever seen in the States. Um, let's see. We're going to learn different kinds of sentences. That's pretty um, generic. We expect that. Parts of speech, common and proper nouns, using a and and the, so definite and indefinite articles. Um, using verbs, subject verb agreement, using the simple present tense. I love how the Caribbean goes through how to understand verbs because here in America, the way that we teach verbs, um, students don't really understand. This. It's not like naturally understood that there's different tenses and different forms. So they often don't really understand about verbs until they get to high school and start learning a foreign language. But now it's difficult to create a comparison um, or something comparable, I should say, for, for the foreign language to English because you didn't learn English that way. And so that makes learning another language um, more difficult. And the way that the Caribbean teaches it, they teach verbs where you see all of that at one time. So now grasping another language is easier because you're able to go, oh, the forms are just like they are in English, but in, in America, we don't teach the forms like that. We only teach the three tenses, um, we teach the voices, and then we move on. But we're not breaking down and really conjugating verbs in English. And the Caribbean actually gives it that approach, and I love that. Um, he's learning different types of punctuation, subject and predicate pronoun, um, adverb phrases of time. I love that. Using the simple past tense. Okay, so they're switching from simple present to simple past. Love that. Um, possessive forms, that's pretty standard. Abstract and collective nouns, that's standard. Verb tenses. Um, and then con using the continuous present tense. Um, forms and functions. I love that because I teach um, the basics of foreign language. I teach the basics of Spanish and I teach the basics of Hebrew. And it's I'm telling you, when I teach only English speakers or native English speakers, they have a hard time grasping those concepts in Hebrew and Spanish because they don't know what it is in English. Um, okay, let's see. Moving on, we also have um, possessive pronouns, simple past tense, the uses of be, prepositions of time, prepositions of place, main clauses, um, sub subordinate clauses, Using the continuous past tense, prepositions of time and place, continuous past, using the passive, and then the perfect present tense, um, and then comparatives and superlatives and adjectives, pretty standard, simple compound, complex sentences, conjunctions, colons, semicolons, that's all standard, using the perfect present tense, using complex sentences and relative clauses, um, verb tenses, and... Um, making comparisons. So that's pretty much what grammar will look like. I'll let you see the inside of the book. Another reason that I like the Caribbean um, curriculum is because for the most part everybody in here is brown um, and then we learn a lot of cultural things including dialects which um, I love. I'm gonna make a um, well not make, I'm gonna add. I've already kind of made it. I'm gonna add um, a-A-V-E, African American um, vernacular, and um, compared to the Caribbean. And then this also does a good job of talking about um, the standard form of English versus other dialects. Caribbean English, um, a lot in here, different like uh, Jamaican or um, what's that in the country? I see a lot. Trini or Trinidad in here as well. And so I'm going to also add. Um, African American vernacular in terms of like southern vernacular versus northern vernacular, but keeping it in context of how African Americans use the language. So that'll be fun. Um, okay, so here's like a page 
out of it if you want to see um, it's a lot of brown people um, even like when they talk about things in the world it's like all over the world and um, lots of color lots of culture that I like I was trying to see if I could find another good page to show you with some animation and characters and things like that. Oh, I love this play. We were reading this play. Um, the main characters are Ephraim and Esther. And as you can see, the girl down here is brown. I believe she plays Creole. And then the guy is also brown. And so I love that. This comes with the workbook. I just don't have it in this video. He'll use um, the workbook. That's more of like supplement because he can write write in this one as well. And then also a teacher's guide that I have. And it's an exact duplication of the pages. It just has teacher um, like tips and skills and hints for me as well as any answers to the um, work that he has to do in this book. Okay, so that is what we're doing for ELA. Just to recap, we have reading comp, we have vocabulary in the form of Latin and Greek groups, we have writing, which we're going to be learning how to write persuasively in terms of confirmation and refutation. We have um, literature, short stories, poetry, as well as major novel study. We have grammar, and we have handwriting. Did I get it all? Yes, I believe I did. That's what we're doing in ELA for grade 7 for the 2018-2019 school year. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please like, share, subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them below, and I will do my best to answer you. Until next time, shalom.